Hello, and welcome along to Adobe After Effects with your host, Robert Smith. In this video, we're going to look at flying around a massive image to reveal slides of our work using blurs and cameras. So let's get stuck into that. To do that, first thing, a new project, Apple N, 1287, 20, 25 frames, 20 seconds will be enough, and OK. I'll go back to one view here. And always fit up to 100% like that. Now, I'm going to import a, a file that I've made in Photoshop. Um, we're assuming that you know how to use Photoshop. Um, it's a huge JPEG. When I say huge, it's 11,500 pixels by 6,000, which is massive. That's why I made it a JPEG. It's only about 15 meg, the file. If it was a, a PSD file, it would be about 500 meg. But it doesn't matter anyway, it's only going to be used to create the blur. So here we are, I'm going to grab that huge JPEG and drag it onto the stage like this. And as you can see, we're only seeing a very tiny part of it in our 1280 by 720 area, but that's okay. Now I'm going to add a camera to do that. I'm going to hold the control key down like this and get a new camera like this. Now I want 50 millimeter preset is good, a one node camera is fine. Just click OK, like this. Now, to bring the uh, JPEG into play, I need to make it a 3D layer. So I'm going to click here, like that. Now it's a 3D layer. If you don't have this option here, click on your toggles and switches down here. You'll see how this changes. If I click back there like that, I can get access to that. OK, now there's two ways of looking at this. So I'm going to go to two views horizontal like this, over here. And right now the camera and the um, image are right on top of each other. Two ways of moving them away. I could grab the image and drag it into Z space that way, or I can drag the camera this way to get it away from it. So let's do that. I'll do the camera thing. So I'm going to drag that down there like that. Move this up a bit. Go to my transform. Now in position, I know I want it to be about minus 15,000. That's a big number, isn't it? Minus 15,000. Oh, look at that, just about perfect. OK, so what's happened? I might have to move that a bit more. Now, if you want to move it quickly, I'm working on the third number here in position. I'll hold the Shift key down and just drag it to the left a little bit like that. OK, and there's my image fitting inside the area. And if you have a look on the left-hand side, you can't even see the camera. It's gone out of view, so if I just... Command minor by clicking over here like this and Apple minus actually or oh, won't go any further than that so I'll just use the hand tool and there's the camera we're zoomed into 1.5 percent okay as you can see we're using we're using big numbers here so the camera has to fly a long way which will cre create a quite a nice blur okay so let's get stuck in um, the first thing I want to do is zoom into this picture at the top up here like that and to do that. I'm going to twirl down my camera like this. Now we're going to be using the position um, most of the time, so rather than do that, what I'll do, I'll just close that up, just press the letter P, so all I can see is the position um, property, which makes life a bit easier. Okay, now I'm going to drag that down a bit. I need to put a keyframe in to start, so I always put a keyframe to start. Now my timeline's showing five second intervals, so I'm going to grab this little yellow thing and drag that to so it's showing one second intervals now. Okay, so I'm going to do anything for the first second. It's always a good idea not to start your video, all the action straight away. Just give it a second just to adjust. Because of all the streaming on the web and things like that, these things can be start a bit awkwardly. So I'm just going to move to about one second in time and just click over here to create another keyframe and absolutely nothing's happened. Okay, now the first thing we want to do is zoom into this picture up on the top left hand side up here. Now to do that, I'm going to use the um, third number again. I'm going to zoom in like that, zooming right in, holding the shift key down. Now I'm going to have to use the first number to drag it across a bit so I can still see it. Like this, I'm using the first number this time. I know if I'm over right on the left hand side, and then I zoom down. Ah, there is, there's the picture I'm after. So away I go again, zooming in, zooming in. Like this. And you can see on the left hand side how the where the camera is, it's actually zooming towards the photo. So I'll just zoom up. Ah, there it is, that's what I'm looking for. And I'll just go down a bit. 
zoom in. I'm just using these three numbers to move things around. The X number here, that one. I'll just move that to the left a little bit. Very nice. And this one down a little bit. Once you get to this point, you don't really need to hold the shift key down, so you can just get smaller increments, if you like. Very nice indeed. Okay, let's have a look at that, what we've just done. Now, a good trick is to, if you just want to watch that little bit, is to just put your um, current time indicator anywhere, just just past the action, and press the letter N, and that'll bring the end of the uh, comp. So when we watch it, we can watch it loop over here like that. Okay, that's what we want. Exactly that. A very quick zoom into the photograph. Okay, what we're going to do is we'll put a bit of ease on that, as we always do. Actually, we'll put a bit of ease between these two, and we'll let our animation easy ease in like that, so it slows down as it comes towards us. Let's watch that. And away it goes, having a bit of a think about it. Now we've added the ease to it. And now we can watch that. Uh, nice, very subtle. Okay, now also I want to just try experiment with the blur. So I'm going to turn the blur on by clicking here. That enables the blur. And down here under the column you'll see the same icon. Just select that like that and that's turned the blur on. Now you don't want to leave the blur on because it'll just slow everything down massively as you'll see once it gets to the blurry part. Right now that's the look we're after on the right hand side. Very blurry. Okay, looks quite a natural move that is. Okay, great. Let's start to move. I'm going to turn that blur off because it's just going to get in the way. Now the next picture I want to see, I want to move as far as I can inside this picture. So I want to go from here over to the bottom right hand corner like that. So to do that, I'm just going to move to about here. Actually I might uh, yeah, move to about there. I can move that back to the end now like this and I can just drag that for about a second we just want it to stay there for a second like that we don't want it to go anywhere so I'm going to click over here to create a keyframe so nothing happens so in it comes like that flies in stops we look at it for about maybe a second's not enough maybe a, maybe two seconds we're going to look at it for so I'll move that to about there Okay, now from that point we have to zoom to another image. Now again, the image we're looking for is going to be right down in the... If we look it up here, we can sort of vaguely see it in this thumbnail up the top up here. We need to go all the way to the right. So to do that, I'm just going to grab this X, drag it like this to the right, holding the shift key down until I get to the other side. Now this is a bit difficult to navigate this where things are because you really can't see them. But if you... Think in X and Y terms, it's quite easy actually. You just look at it at the little thumbnail where it is, go to the edge of the page, or whatever you need to do. So now I need to go down to find the image I'm looking for. Ah, and there it is there. Great, so I'm just zooming that up. I'll, I'll let go of the shift key now that I'm a bit close to it. Not the scale, just zoom that across a little bit. Do the Y thing. Uh, as you can see, it gets a bit tricky here. After Effects is struggling a little bit. Okay, and I just might zoom in just a fraction to fill the screen. So let's have a look at that. Go back here. Like this, and away it goes. Zooms to there, stays there, and then zooms all the way across to our other image, and we'll apply the blur later. Okay, so I just might zoom out a little bit so I've got, got a bit more timeline. Now that needs to be there for about the same amount of time, so I'll move to about here, put in a keyframe. Now the next one I want to go to is this one here, which is, um, yeah, um, yeah, I'll go to this one here. Uh, or should now, I'll, what I'm looking for basically is the furthest journey I can go from this bottom corner. So I could probably go up to here. So to do that, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move along a little bit like that. And now I know I've got to go to the top and to the left. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to go to the top using the second number. Like this, just dragging the second number until I get to the top. And then I'm going to go to the right, just by to the left, I should say, until I run into that image. Now I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, but... 
Um, I haven't worked one out yet. Okay, so I'm just going to move this up a little bit. There's the image we're after. Very nice indeed. That's exactly what we want. Okay, and we want that to stay there for about the same amount of time. So we'll click over here like that. Okay, now this is what you keep doing. Say I've got about six or seven photos on this stuck on this background, um, this city scene, and I would just fly around like this. I've just done two or three. That's enough. They're all exactly the same. Just the hardest part is to work out where you are on such a huge image. So let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at the finished product. Now to do that, to check it out, I'm just going to put my current time indicator to about here and then press the letter N on the keyboard and that brings the end of my composition into play. So let's have a look at that. Away it goes and zooms in across to there, to there and up to there. Okay, now we need to shorten this a little bit between there and we also need to add some um, ease to these two. Actually we'll add some ease to these as well by selecting them, dragging a marquee, go to keyframe assistant, easy ease in. That means it just slows down. Okay, so that looks okay. That's quite good, but once we the magic of the blur, if I click on the blur now and um, I have the blur already selected, but it wasn't working because this thing wasn't turned on. Basically, the, all of these things work the same. You just click on it and then turn it on down. That turns it on, and then it's available to any layer you want to use it on. So let's have a look. There's a RAM preview of what we've got. Before we do that, let's just stop that, and we'll go back to one view like that. And let's watch the uh, magic. As you can see, it's blurs in between when it's traveling which gives it a realistic look and then because it's managing such a huge file now that won't matter once it's playing back as a quick time but in here in After Effects it, it will actually slow your computer down it'll tell you it's time for a new computer as you can see we really love that blur even though we won't see it for very long now I'm working on a relatively new Mac it's probably about a year old and it's struggling now, I could go here and change the resolution here, but I'm this far in, so let's have a look. Uh, great, that's what we want. Plenty of blur and plenty of action. Okay, that's a great way of showing your work, putting it into a scene and just flying it around very quickly and applying um, a bit of blur. Okay, thanks for watching.